our second system that we're going to be looking at in our overview of all 11 body systems is the skeletal system. This system is composed of our bones and of cartilage. Um, we, in a typical adult skeleton, there's going to be 206 bones. Um, at the end of our bones, where they come into contact with other bones, there's cartilage there to help cushion and keep them from rubbing against each other. Um, our skeletal system functions to support, so it helps keep our body upright. Um, our muscles attach to and pull on our bones that let us move. Our bones also offer protection. So an example of that would be your skull, which is made of several bones, surrounds and protects your brain. Um, in this picture here, you can see compact bone, which is tightly packed bone cells, and then spongy bone, it's more loosely uh, put together, it's similar to what a sponge would look like. Um, and they're gonna provide some different functions, but within spongy bone, in certain bones in our body, we have red bone marrow, and that's gonna be where our blood cells are formed. Another function of the skeletal system is the storage of minerals such as calcium. Our muscles need calcium to help them contract, so we need to maintain a constant, or a certain level of calcium in our blood so it can get to our muscle cells. So one thing that's gonna happen, if you don't have enough calcium in your blood, you have a hormone that's gonna be released that causes calcium to come out of your bones and into your blood. There's a different hormone that can be released when you have too much calcium in your blood, and that will have the calcium be deposited back into your bone. There are different types of bone in our skeletal system. Um, we have flat bones can see that right here. Um, they are going to be relatively thin and sheet like. Um, they are going to offer protection of internal organs. So right here is part of the skull. The skull is actually made of several different bones um, and that would in this case protect the brain. Next we have short bones. Those are kind of even in length and width. So they're kind of cube shaped almost and we find them in compact spaces. Um, we would have those in our wrists, which would be our carpals, and our ankles, which would be our tarsals. Next, we have sesamoid bones. Um, those are going to be suspended in a tendon. So right here, we have the patella or your kneecap. Next is a long bone. Um, that is called a long bone because it is long. It's longer than it is wide. We have that in our extremities. So an example would be our humerus in our upper arm. And finally, we have vertebrae, which falls into the irregular bone category. Um, it's called an irregular bone really because it has an odd shape and it doesn't fit into any of those other types of bone. In our skeleton, where bones come into contact with other bones, it's going to form a joint. We have different types of joints in our body, and we'll talk about that when we actually cover the skeletal system um, later in the year. Uh, what we're going to look at here are called synovial joints. These joints are going to have kind of special features that other joints in our body don't have. Um, they have a fluid in a capsule called synovial fluid, um, and that just helps to kind of lubricate the joint and allow um, movement to happen fairly easily. So first we have a gliding joint. Uh, in this model, you can see that it allows back and forth uh, move movements. Um, we can see right here, um, an example of that would be between your clavicle and the upper part of your sternum. Your clavicle is your collarbone and your sternum is your breastbone. Next would be a hinge joint. If you think of a hinge like in a door that allows the door to open and close, a hinge joint is going to allow a similar open and close kind of back and forth movement. Um, one place we can find that would be at our elbow. So as you bring your hand up towards your shoulder and you're bending your elbow, that is a hinge joint. Next, we have a pivot joint. So if you were to turn your head from left to right, that allows back and forth movement. And we have an example of the uh, pivot joint would be uh, in between our first and second vertebrae, the atlas and the axis that allow us to have that back and forth movement. Uh, the next joint is called, there's a couple names for this one, ellipsoid or condylar. Um, we have these joints, an example of that would be um, 
at the base of our fingers, that knuckle that's right there, um, that would be that particular type of joint. Next, a saddle joint we only have at the base of our thumb. This kind of joint gives humans and other primates that feature of an opposable thumb, so it allows that particular kind of motion. And then finally, we have ball and socket joints. We have those in our shoulders and our hips. There is a ball-like structure that fits into this concave socket that's there, um, and that allows a the, that kind of joint allows a great variety of motion. So you can go kind of rotate your arm. Um, you can move it in a circle. So you would have um, at your hips and your shoulders a wide range of motion. Just like we saw an introductory video, video yesterday, we're going to go through one for the skeletal system as well. This will let you kind of see a little bit more about the skeletal system. The adult human skeleton is made up of 206 individual bones. These bones can be categorized into the medially located axial skeleton and the adjoining appendicular skeleton. The axial skeleton is made up of the skull, hyoid bone, vertebral column, sternum, and ribcage. The appendicular skeleton contains the bones that make up the upper and lower limbs. The bones of the skeleton are categorized into five separate groups based on their shape. Long bones, short bones, flat bones, irregular bones, and sesamoid bones. Long bones have a tubular shaft and are found in the limbs such as the femur. Short bones are cuboidal and are found in the ankle and wrist, such as the capitate bone of the wrist. Flat bones are broad and sheet-like and include bones of the skull that surround the brain, such as the parietal bones. Irregular bones are groups of bones that do not fit into the long, short, or flat groups, such as the T6 thoracic vertebra. Sesamoid bones are a special group of bones that are found within tendons, such as the patella. so there you have kind of an overview of the skeletal system. Um, you are going to use this lesson to help you complete your assignment for today.